In this video, we're gonna make a beautiful little bird um, using needle felting techniques. To get started, you're going to grab some carded wool in whatever color you'd like your bird to be. I'm going for brown. Um, and you're gonna start by rolling that wool up nice and tight, uh, forming the shape of a ball as best you can. So rolling the wool on top of itself in till it's a nice firm little ball like that. You're then gonna get your needle felting needle. These are special needles because they've got little barbs on the end. They're gonna help those wool fibers felt together. And what you're going to do is using your needle felting mat, because we obviously don't want the tip of the needle to go into the table. We're just gonna start very carefully poking at this wool using the needle felting needle. And what you'll find as you do that, the wool fibers are gonna to bind together and they're gonna form the beautiful little round body of our bird. The trick when doing this is to make sure that you're stabbing your needle in and out in a straight motion, not coming in on, uh, in on an angle and pulling it up onto a different angle. Because uh, doing that is actually what's gonna cause your needle to snap. So you just wanna keep it nice and straight. You also wanna keep your fingers where you can see them because that is gonna stop uh, you, you accidentally stabbing yourself. So just go round and round like that. And what we're wanting to create is a nice little body of the bird. You'll see this ball, um, or the body, I should say, the body of the bird, not a ball, is starting to take shape. Um, and what I like to do is as I'm rotating it around, um, I just start to look at what end might be the base of the bird. And then I just sort of stab at that a little bit more to flatten it. And that's just gonna make it a little bit easy for our bird to sit up like that. Um, and you'll find with needle felting, you'll, you'll get the feel for it as you go but it is possible to shape the body just a little bit as you go. Um, and it's just a matter of just deciding where to, where to, to overstab, I suppose. Um, you don't want it to lose its form altogether. But I think, oops, I think that's starting to look really cute. Now, of course, if we want to make that bird a little bit bigger, which I actually wouldn't mind doing, at this point, we just grab some more wool, we wrap it around, and we go again. And this is gonna just slowly build, build on that body of the bird and make it bigger. You can't start too big um, because you'll find it just won't felt. You do have to start with sort of a smaller size ball and then build, build up to the bigger body. Um, so it can take a little bit of time, um, but you get, you get quicker <laughs> as you go, the more you do it. Um, now you'll notice I'm using a single needle um, this is a 38 star, it's my favourite, favourite all-rounder. But there are, other, there are other needles out there. And you know what, I'm even going to switch to one now so you can see. This is actually a nine, a nine needle, a nine point needle. Um, so it's going to felt, in theory, it's going to felt a bit faster because there's a lot more needles at play. So I might just speed this up. by using this needle, but you've got to be very careful. This one is um, it's a different size. I find it's a lot harder to, um, you know, when working with the small shapes like this one, I find that the single needle actually, you know, takes longer, but is a little bit easier. But um, I'm wanting to practice getting the feel for this needle a bit more. It's actually just not quite right in this, for this job. So we'll switch back. So there we go. I'm just going to um, make the bottom a little bit flat and I might just try and shape 
this body just a little bit just to give it a little bit of form you know the way we might see on a real bird so I'll just sort of go in like that there we go now I'm deliberately leaving the top of the bird's body uh, a little bit unfelted and the reason for that is when we um, attach its head um, by having those loose fibers it is going to make attaching the head that little bit easier so that's just a nice little tip for attaching to uh, felted objects. We're going to repeat the exact same process now, but making uh, this time we're making the head of the bird. So we're going to roll up some of the wool and we're going to needle felt it into a round ball shape. Um, of course, we want to keep this shape smaller than that of the body. Um, for perspective so it's just sort of gauging that with your eye that you don't grab too much wool so you can then just start to piece it together and you know see if you're happy with it I am not I'd like that head to be a bit bigger so just as we did before, we need to grab some more of the wool. Just keep felting it until it's at a shape and a size that we like. So at this point, we've got our head and we've got our body. Um, as I said, I left the top part of the body um, just a little bit unfelted. And I've also left the bottom part of the head um, unfelted. And the reason for that is what we want to do now is we want to attach the two. So by placing uh, the head on top of the body, it's just a matter of gently stabbing those loose fibres from the end of the head into what is essentially the neck of the body. Remember, really important not to bend the needle, you know, as you're going in and out. So just keeping that angle straight as you go in and out um, to make sure that that wool really attaches itself. I definitely don't want to lose the bird's head. <laughs> there we go. So that's looking quite cute. We've got our head and we've got our body. Um, and you can obviously um, shape your little bird a little bit more if you want to. I might just try and give it just a little bit more of a little bit more form so just going round and round just like so um, and a good little test is if you just gently pull on their head you just get a feel so for instance I can see on this side it was not attached quite as well as it needed to be we just keep going like that So you want to be careful you don't over needle uh, parts either because what, what will happen is you'll lose the shape that you've created. Okay, I think that, that will do. Okay, looking very cute. The next step is to add the, um, you know, the breast of the bird. Um, you could use white, you could use red, um, you know, you can be as creative as you like. I um, I'm gonna do white, but I think I'm gonna add just like a little bit of red as well, um, for interest. But we'll just I'll see how it goes. <laughs> I kind of want this to have a little bit of a festive feel. 
So I'm going to grab my white wool. And um, for this, I'm going to switch to a, a lighter needle, but it, it doesn't really matter. You just you can use whatever needle you've got. Um, and basically what we're doing is we're just very gently going to felt the white on top of the brown just to create that effect of, um, you know, we see those beautiful birds in real life and they've got those lovely, lovely defined chests. But we're actually going to um, expand it up onto the face as well. So that's why you need to have the head and body attached first. Um, and you can just shape the wool as you go by just sort of using your needle to just gently manoeuvre the wool into the position that you want. So that's how you can get sort of a, a slightly curved look, just like that. Um, so this needle, this is a clover needle. I've got all my the wool and the needles that I use listed down below in the comments. But this needle is great because it's just um, it's so thin, the needle prongs, that they, um, they don't distort the shape of the bird at all, but they just really nicely attach the new colour. There we go, looking pretty cute. So, I'm thinking I might add the red at the end because I'm still not 100% sure that I want to do it. Um, we'll move on and do the wings. So, for me, I'm going to go back to my original brown and then I'm going to tear off two pieces of the brown the same size because we want to make sure that we get the wings obviously looking the same and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to fold the wool onto itself to sort of form a bit of a triangle shape and then I'm just going to stab 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 um, again I'm using the clover uh, it's actually meant to be a three-point needle I've only got two needles in it at the moment um, this particular needle, this clover needle, is really good at creating sort of more flat style felt versus the single needle, which is great at making the 3D shapes. So what I'm going to do, I'm just simply stab, stab, stab to uh, form a bit of a felted piece. But then as I'm going, I'm just going to start to use the sides and edges of the needle to sort of shape the wool into the the shape of the wing that I want it want it to be um, and of course it's up to you what kind of shape wing you want um, but the trick is to always be uh, measuring it up against the bird's body otherwise you could end up with a wing that's bigger or smaller um, and it'll all look a little bit out of proportion Um, and it's also a good idea to flip the wool as you go um, because otherwise, particularly when doing this sort of flatter style felting, um, the wool can start to felt into your felting mat if you're not, if you're not careful. So a good idea just to flip it over as you go. Um, and I'm just going to use my single needle now just to tidy up the edges. I sort of want that wing to look quite neat. I'm just sort of stabbing all the way around those edges to make sure they're all nice and felted. And I think I've put it up against my bird a couple of times and I'm 
pretty happy with that size. The other thing I've been doing, if you notice, I've been pinching it at one end because we still want to keep, remember, some of that loose wool so that we can attach this wing to the bird um, at the end. Do you know what? It's actually still a bit big. I'm just going to keep felting it until it's smaller. Okay, that's one wing. Quite cute. And we're now going to do the exact same thing for the other wing. Um, and the trick is to try and keep the two wings looking as um, similar as possible. Um, so that's why it's always handy to, to pull the two bits of loose wool apart at the same time at the start like we did because um, that will just sort of help ensure that they're going to be roughly the same size because we're working with the same amount of wool. Um, but also what I'll do, I just like to keep the first wing kind of on hand so I can just compare rather than attaching it to the bird it becomes harder to check Okay, so my two wings, they're not, they're not perfectly the same, but they're, oops, I think once we attach them, what I could probably do is I could probably just make this edge a bit flatter on the second wing. Okay, so you can see that? Not too bad. So to attach the wings, it's very similar process to how we attached the, um, like the neck. So we're just going to grab that loose part and push it in. It's up to you where you want to put the wing. I personally prefer to have it higher. I feel that gives it a bit more of a natural look. And so I just want to grab all that loose brown wool and make sure it's all attached nice and firmly. And then a good little trick is actually just to lift up the wing and just felt it from behind as well so just get that under wing and stab all up in there there we go beautiful and now we want to do the same on the other side um, making sure of course that we we line it up as best we can so that our wings aren't wonky um, and the best way to do this is I um like I, I judge by sort of my eye. And then what I do is I sort of, I start to felt very gently so that I've given myself just a little bit of scope to move um, the wing around if I have to. So I'm quite happy with that. There's our, oops, there's our bird with its wings. Next step is the tail. Um, so this is really easy. This is just exactly what we've done with the wings. Um, and you can shape your tail however you like. I kind of like to just sort of pinch the wool like this. So I suppose like a bit of a fan. And then just basically um, felt it into shape the fan keeping of course that end between my fingers are uh, still loose as wool so that I can attach the tail nice and easily to the bird
Okay, and then we're just going to attach that tail just as we've done with everything else. Um, I'm going to put it, actually attach it like on the bottom of the bird because um, that is just going to mean it's nice and sort of flat and easy to attach just like so. Oops. Beautiful. Look at that. It's looking really good. Um, so it's just sort of really the last little bits now is just to put on the eyes and the beak. And then, um, as I said at the start, I still want to do a bit of that red, maybe a, a red breast. Um, so I'm just going to get a tiny bit of black wool, roll it up in my finger to form a bit of a loose ball. And then I'm just going to place it over on the face. And using my single point needle, that's really important because single point needle definitely does the best job for this. I'm just going to gently push it into place. Um, and this is where using the side of your needle becomes really effective because it helps you get that round shape of the eye that you want. Okay, so go again for the second eye. I think I'm making the second eye a bit, a little bit bigger, I think would look quite nice. Make it look quite cute, nice big, big black eyes. So I deliberately made that second eye bigger because I think, I think that just looks quite cute. So I'm just going to go back to the first eye and just add a little bit more. The great thing about felt is that it's actually really quite forgiving. You know, some other crafts, you know, you can't really make afford to make a mistake, but with felt, you can always come back and just tweak it a little bit, add a little bit more. Well, of course, it is hard to take away once you've felted something in place, but it's not impossible. You do have to be careful with this bit though. Um, because if you over felt, um, it will distort the shape that you've created. So I can just see that actually starting to occur here with this eye. Just do that. Okay, so we now want just a little bit of yellow. We're going to make a beak. Um, and it's a very similar process to when we made the wings, except, of course, we're using way less wool. And we're just sort of folding that beak wool on top of itself, using our single needle to felt it all into place. Um, and doing the best you can to get it to form that sort of triangular shape so that it resembles a beak. Um, for this, because it's so small, you really, really do have to um, be mindful of rotating it frequently or it is going to just get itself stuck into your felting mat. Okay, it's just like so, round and round. Okay, and then I'm going to attach it onto the face. And I actually think that these eyes, because I've made, uh, it's like a never ending sort of project, isn't it? But I do feel I made the black eyes so big that they would now benefit from just having a little bit of a white shine to them. So I'm just going to grab a tiny bit of white felt, a white felt, just white wool, and just, 
just add that in just to add a little bit more depth Now for me, the final part was I wanted to add a little bit of red to the chest. So I'm just going to grab just a little bit of red wool. Oh, and just going to just sort of want it to be nice and flat. I just sort of want to have just a little, just make it a little bit festive, I think. Just put it sort of there. I'm just going to gently felt that sort of into place. So it's not completely covering the white. It's just like a little bit of extra red feathers, you know, on its chest there. And there we have it, a little red-breasted robin. <laughs> Very cute. So you can see, um, I'll move this out of the way so you can see the contrast a bit better. So you can see there's so many possibilities. You could have birds of every colour, every you know size. Um, you know, you could have different wings, different tails. Um, you know, lots, lots of possibilities here for design. Um, but that's your basic structure for making the bird. Um, if you got to the end, can you please drop an, um, a bird emoji into the comments section? That way I know that you've reached the end and that you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to hit subscribe so that you can follow along um, my felting journey. And um, thank you so much for tuning in. I really hope that you found that tutorial useful.